The following program is brought to you by Caltech. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Tom Sofer, the Chairman of the Division of Physics, Math, and Astronomy here at Caltech, and it's really my, my pleasure to welcome all of you to this afternoon of celebration. Uh, today, we're going to have fun, at least I'm going to have fun, uh, commemorating what I think is one of the great events in the history of astronomy. Uh, 20 years ago and nine days, uh, to be specific, on the evening of the 16th of March, 1993, the first observations with the Keck-1 telescope using the first scientific instrument were made. Um, I unfortunately missed that that night because uh, to, to show Jean-Louis what a conscientious soul I am, uh, classes were still in session and I was teaching. Uh, I did make it out a few days later and was there for the rest of that initial scientific run. Uh, uh, time flies when you're having fun. It really does seem like only yesterday. Um, it's been a remarkable 20 years of uh, exploration and discovery that uh, I, as well as many of my colleagues, many of the people in this room, have had the pleasure to participate in over these last two decades. Uh, today, you'll hear a little bit about what we've learned uh, from the Keck Observatory and where we're going in the future. You know, one of the great pleasures of being a, a faculty member here at Caltech is we get to, to train, to work with and train the very best students and uh, postdocs. You'll hear some of their work and learn uh, more of their research uh, in the poster papers uh, that are outside. I hope during the break and afterwards at the reception that you'll take the time to uh, look at the posters, talk to the students, and meet them. These are the, these are the leaders of uh, astronomy in the future. And uh, it, it's, uh, they're doing exciting things, and, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, before I begin the afternoon, uh, on behalf of Caltech Astronomy, I, I do want to uh, thank the Keck Foundation for the magnificent gift that has made possible what I can uh, modestly and humbly describe as the very best observatory on the planet. And with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Caltech's president, uh, Jean-Louis Chameau. Good afternoon. It's also my great pleasure to welcome you to this event, uh, which, which will be followed by other events next week in, in, uh, in, in Hawaii at the, at the observatory. And uh, it is a great celebration. And, and first, as Tom just did, I really want to thank the, the, the Keck Foundation and the leadership of the Keck Foundation for the vision you had uh, more than 20 years ago and for the continuing support that you have expressed and shown to, uh, to Caltech and in, in this particular example to the UC system to the, and to the scientific community at large. I believe at the time it was the uh, largest uh, single gift for a science, as a scientific uh, toward the scientific endeavor of, in the history of, of academia and, and of foundations. So I think it is really, it was a, an exciting thing to do, a very brave thing to do, and we, and, and, and we thank you. Uh, this afternoon, you will have, as already was said, a number of faculty, students, postdocs who are going to, uh, to highlight the discoveries that were, have been made since then. And uh, it is quite, uh, quite amazing. In fact, uh, I'm, I'm sure that, that even in terms of a number of, uh, of data, I understand it is the largest number of papers per faculty of any astronomical organization in the world. But more inter importantly, the discoveries which, uh, which were made, the, the knowledge we have of the universe has changed dramatically uh, because of the, of the Keck uh, Observatory and, 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 and the support. Um, it is also, to me, exciting to, 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 to appreciate that uh, in the last 20 years, major improvements to instrumentation were, were made, new instruments were developed, 
new technologies were developed, and in fact, many people from all around the world are benefiting from it, and we will continue to benefit from it in the future. Uh, as many of you know, uh, uh, Caltech and, and a UC system and a, and a group of other universities and partners in the world are working on the planning on the next generation of telescope, an even larger one, the, the 30 meter telescope. And this planning and this, uh, this future endeavor is made possible because of the, the learning and the technology which has been developed and instrumentation uh, by the CAC. So I won't add, I won't take much of, much of your time. It's really exciting to have you here, uh, except I would like to add like, uh, like, like uh, was already done by Tom. Now you're going to have a presentation today, but I really encourage you to spend some time at the break and at the end with the students outside and, uh, and their posters. Really, uh, with all the respect to my faculty colleagues, they're the ones who are, who are, who are running the research. So, so <laughs> please spend, spend some time with them. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Lou. Um, now, I'd like to ask uh, Jim Lauer to come up here and say a few words on behalf of the Keck Foundation. Jim is the general counsel for the Keck Foundation, and he's a member of the Foundation's Board of Directors. Jim. Thank you, Tom. Honored President and uh, Dr. Seufer and distinguished scientists and friends of Caltech. Thank you for having us here. Um, we're very, very pleased to be here. Um, I can see many Keck Foundation representatives here, and I won't call them out by name, except one of them staring at me right there to make sure I get my facts straight. <laughs> and uh, Allison, thanks for coming and representing the staff. Um, <clears throat> there's some thank yous here already given to the Keck Foundation, and really I'm here to give two prominent thank yous back to, to Caltech. And I hope you'll bear with me, this will be short. Anytime you can shut up a lawyer, you ought to take advantage of it. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I just happened to have been around when um, these events transpired in, in the mid-1985 area. And I thought I'd share some of that with you so you can get an idea of where this came from and how very difficult it was, not just in terms of the science to be proven, but in terms of the courage and conviction of the W.M. Keck Foundation, principally Howard Keck, our then president. I must say Robert Day couldn't be here and our new president, Jim Ukrapin, is also out of town, so for you computer scientists, I'm your default position, but I'll, I'll, they send their very best. Um, <clears throat> the W.M. Keck Foundation has a really remarkable history in terms of not just its grant giving, but its growth. Um, from, I'm not gonna get into too much details, but basically the late 70s through present, we've grown to over a billion dollars in assets. And Allison will give you the correct number, but we've given away over 1.4, closer to 1.5 billion dollars in that time frame. And that's quite a remarkable achievement. And it requires uh, not only dedication, uh, but also investment expertise, which our chairman Robert has helped us with, and Howard was very good at that. You cannot grow a billion dollars and give away a billion dollars without really great investment oversight, and we've been blessed with that. Um, but cranking the clock back to 1985, um, as you may know, the principal asset of this foundation and the trust which held most of the asset until Howard's death was Superior Stock. And Superior Oil Company wasn't sold until May to October of 84, 85. And this first grant agreement was signed between Howard for the foundation and Murph Goldberger, then president of Caltech, in June of 1985. Um, our asset base was barely one half of what it is today. And this is a big chunk out of our grant giving for a project for which we had tremendous hope in Jerry Nelson's brilliant segmented mirror design, but yet unproven. And it took a lot of courage, it took a lot of willpower, 
As Howard said, once we made the decision, we will not tolerate wavering in purpose, and we did not. But we needed a partner to help us through the situation. Now, I was speaking with Ed, and he and, he and I both, I think, correctly recall that Howard did really not have a background in astronomy. He didn't come to this through that study and love of astronomy or cosmology as we refer to it today. Um, but Caltech brought him this project and it was big, it was risky, and it had the prospects of uh, making breakthrough discoveries in science that had never been made before. As Howard progressed to understand more and more about this grant he had encouraged his board to make, he became to love the concept of delving into the universe, looking back in time further than any person, university, or institution had ever looked, and studying the very shape of the universe. He did come to love that. And so he became more and more dedicated and um, committed to his goal. But if you think back to the trustees or the directors of our foundation, the load and responsibility we had on our shoulders to vote to approve that at that particular time, you think of the word trust. We could not have done this without Caltech and our trust in Caltech and of course Lawrence Livermore and the people that work at CARA. And um, I would say that is a second thank you for proving to the world that our trust was well placed. So it's our thanks to you that we were um, proudly represented in this great venture in science. And I will sit down with one final remark which Howard shared with me. I represented him, had the pleasure of representing him in private um, business matters as well as charity. And he said, Jim, if you ever want to get something done, pick a great project with great people and leave them alone. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs>